But the reality is, you know who the biggest culprit for all of this is? It's Mike D'Antoni. He knows that. He played for Mike D'Antoni. Mike D'Antoni wanted you to shoot threes or layups. He didn't want no mid-range game. He would consider benching you if you took a mid-range shot. Am I lying? Except for me. I mean, I shot a, a lot of mid-range. Not you. Not you. But those guards <laughs> but that yeah, you put but out there, absolutely. if they would, if they launch mid-range shots instead of three, doggy, he didn't like it. Yep. I'm going to tell you something else because you'll appreciate the being a historical individual that you are, <laughs> that Molly so eloquently stated earlier Thank today. You, Molly. Okay, you'll give me your oh, Molly's going to explain it the way it needs to be explained. Okay. But here's the deal. My brother. The guy I love so much that I believe is the greatest player to have ever played, Michael Jordan, is responsible as much as anybody for changing the game for the worse hmm. when you consider you. Stay with me on this. Okay. This is throwing no shade on Michael Jordan, of course. He's the greatest ever in my estimation, number one, mm -hmm. all right? But he was so phenomenal that the NBA marketed the individual the audience gravitated towards the individual, and the game became a bit more individualized because people wanted to be like Mike. Before Mike, you had Bird and Jordan. I mean, Bird and Magic. Well, what was Bird and Magic? As great of a shooter as Bird was, as Mr. Clutch as he was, okay? Bird could pass, Bird could rebound, Bird had McHale, he had Parrish, he had Dennis Johnson, he had Gerald Henderson, he had a whole bunch, Danny Ainge and others. They had a team, all right? Blue collar, but team. Well, what was Magic? Magic was Showtime. As phenomenal as Magic was, what was his number one attribute? Passing. Mm -hmm. So guess what? He, he inherited Norm Nixon. You had Jamal Wilkes, all right? You had Kareem. All of a sudden, you got Worthy. You got go from Norm Nixon to Byron Scott. You still got Michael Cooper. You got Michael Thompson. You had Kurt Rambis. The list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And you marveled. And think about this. You had guys once upon a time that would grab rebounds and want to dribble. Magic came along, and the first thing you did was grab that rebound. Where's Magic? Here you go. And Magic pushed the ball up the court. He had Worthy on his right. He had Byron Scott on his left. He had Cooper trailing. And if that didn't materialize into fast break points, then they'd slow it down and wait for Kareem. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you were thinking team until Jordan elevated it to another level. And from Jordan, then you had the Kobe's, the Vince Carter's, and others that came along thereafter and the individualization of the sport, particularly because of the money that came. With so Kevin Durant didn't like this. He didn't like this take at all. He said, and he hops on Twitter, gives his two cents. It's my theory is that guys like Steve, Skip, and Shannon, threw them all in there, changed the game for the worse. Players like Stephen A. and Michael can, excuse Players me, like Stephen, Stephen. Excuse me, thank you, <laughs> Steph, um, as in Steph Curry, can only push the game forward. Um, this kind of... Matriculates into more tweets going back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen A. says that there will always be guys like me around, yeah. um, saying that you will, you can't get rid of us um, in terms of reporters who speak on the game the way that Stephen A., Skip, and Shannon do. So, um, yeah. What do y'all think? Is Kevin Durant's assessment of Stephen A., Skip, Shannon, and everyone else you can throw in that ballpark legitimate i mean immediately based off these comments immediately like if we're gonna do let me start by saying this uh commentators analysts etc etc have pushed the game forward um so i'm not gonna disrespect all of my act like it's it's not needed yeah <clears throat> you saying the greatest basketball player like generally like if the one time I can use the that term unanimously, right. like without anybody arguing, you're saying the greatest basketball player has had a hand in ruining basketball in any aspect while on national TV is extremely irresponsible to the game, your platform, other players, and basketball, and, and period. How does somebody who's globalized the game, got everybody paid more, analysts included, created more jobs, this is Michael Jordan we're talking about, mm. and I understood the aspect in which Stephen A. Smith explained it, that, is, that was sloppy to say. Mm. So the criticism and critiquing it of Kevin Durant, like, 
I think guys like Stephen A. was putting in the work, and you know they have a right to speak about basketball. I'm not going to take it that far, yeah. But I'm not mad that he's pushing back in the way that he just did. Um, that's a that's a wild thing to say, and I think people when people throw that stuff a lot, like ruining basketball because of the threes, it's still a wild thing to say. But when you take it into to the context and we're doing now, like the greatest basketball player ever has had a hand in ruining the game. That's not a topic, uh, a talking point. That's not something you bring up on national TV and in my eyes. And I would hate to see that being used by any kind of Braun fans for any kind of arguments. But there's some, I think it was disrespectful to even mention, even if you think you had a case to, to defend it. Okay. You made a face. No, because I actually, first off, I kind of understand what KD was trying to say, and I do agree with it to some extent. But to Tamon's point, like I said, you also have to recognize the media is the reason all of y'all make millions of dollars. Like, they're the ones that push the narrative. There's some they're negative the things, of but. Of course. They, like I said, so in understanding that the way the media shapes things and the narratives they use, yes, can oftentimes be a detriment to some players and to basketball in a sense. To your point, though, I kind of understood what Stephen A was saying to some point saying Michael Jordan ruined the game of basketball, I didn't take it as a sense of, like, he ruined the popularity or he ruined... You're talking about the game. The game. I'm talking about literally the, on the way floor. the game was played, played on yeah. the floor. Michael Jordan did have a hand at ruining It became individualized and everything. Same way Steph Curry has to some point. But why, why? That's not no, ruining no, the no, game. No, That's no, changing. No, 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 no. But no, can, but can this, is the, no. this is the point we're talking about. It's the word ruin. To affect something and to change it, to modify it, to alter it—that's one thing. So that's yeah. always to say that Michael Jordan had a hand in ruining basketball Rage. is totally different. This isn't—we yeah. can—we can talk semantics or whatever, but he used the word "ruin." Have you have you seen the one funny video? Who's the dude? I think he's some, he has an African accent on Twitter. He's like, mm. "You're ruining it, man! You're ruining <laughs> it! Ruining it!" You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm I talking so. about? Right? I think so. Yo, those joints, are yeah. Key. <laughs> but like I said, to the point of like. And once again, I think the whole ruin thing, it always comes down to perception. It's what do you view as what do you like about basketball? And this is where, like I said, a lot of us, come on, we're, we're the young heads on this, and I'm getting old now. But we have these arguments with old heads all the time. We sit and talk about, oh, basketball is so bad, and all they do is shoot threes, and there's no defense. And it's like, for us, that's like, that's not a bad thing. Like, they're taking smart shots. Defense rotations are actually way better than they ever were in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Yeah. Like, the game is just played at a different way now. But to old heads, they ruined it. But that's that's the thing that KD had came back and tweeted more about. He said, when you use the phrase Michael Jordan and ruining basketball in any sense, you have made a mistake. You should just speak more clearly in what you mean. I you think- said, or not you, I mean, I'm <laughs> pointing to Stephen A, yeah. mm-hmm. that... You, uh, Michael Jordan ruined basketball. There's only so like much that. context in the word ruin. It's I, a detriment. It's a negative. Whether it's changed from one generation to the next, that's mm-hmm. not what he said. I dislike it more now. That's not what he said. He said Michael Jordan had a hand in ruining basketball. No, he didn't. That's a horrible perception yeah, he, to take. Yeah. Michael Jordan had arguably, arguably one of the largest impacts in elevating the game of basketball. So even if you take that context and what he's trying to say, because I de- I do think Michael Jordan helped individualize the game. That could have been a bad thing for a lot of people who did grow up in that generation watching. But what he said was irresponsible, and it was in no way, shape, or form in the context that we have to now try yeah. to figure out around it. Because the immediate view is Kevin Durant is completely right. You don't say that about Michael Jordan and basketball. 100%. Like I said, I've always been, like I said, I'm somebody that kind of, it's weird because, like I said, I grew up in the 2000s, but I've always viewed, like, that late 90s, early 2000s era is, like, Especially now, I've gone back and done my history and research. Like to me, that's always been like like your golden era, or like uh, a basketball. No, like I think that was one of the bad eras of basketball due to Michael Jordan's influence on the game. If we're just talking the game, and you're, you're, you you said which era was bad? The nineties, uh, the... like that late nineties, early two thousands. And what makes you say that? Why? Because, like I said, going back to the Michael Jordan influence, and Stephen A. brought this up to a to a point as well. Like the eighties. In the 70s, like, there was a very preeminent thing of, like, it was team basketball. It's Magic Johnson, it's LeBron, or not LeBron, Larry Bird, and so on and so forth. Like, we play as a team. Yeah. That Scores were high because they were getting up and down the floor. Everybody right. touched the ball, so on and so forth. 
Then you get Michael Jordan, who, because he was the greatest, because there was nobody that could stop him, because he had the best team in the 90s, they ran off this dynastic era playing. While the triangle does predicate on ball movement, it does lean into a lot of ISO hero. tendencies. It was, hero ball. it was a lot of hero ball. And Michael Jordan was the greatest ever at it. So everybody after that wanted to emulate Kobe, Carter, McGrady, Penny, um, Jerry Stackhouse, so on and so forth. You had a lot of guys. Even Iverson tried to, yeah. in his own way, yeah. play that style. And it was kind of bad basketball. That's why you see shooting percentages drop. Scores drop. Defense, everybody talk about how great the defense was. No, you were guarding one guy. Like, it wasn't, we load up, we make him shoot a tough shot, he shoots 42% from the field, he gets 30 points, everybody's happy. Like, it's just a weird style. And granted, we saw a lot of our players that we know and love grow up in that. I'm yeah. the biggest Kobe fan as you can see. Yeah. But even you remember there were times I was always sitting by Kobe, and I was like, man, I wish Kobe wouldn't try to do this by himself so much because it's not good basketball. I didn't understand that at 13, but now I'm like, no, it just wasn't good basketball to play. There's a wide open guy in the corner. Pass it, let him shoot it, or pass it, cut, get to a new, get to a new spot, and take a better shot. Yeah, like and if and yeah. that's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I I agree with you. It was literally the term in which uh, Stephen but, A. Smith explained it on national TV to millions and, of people and in the right. audience. And, and as you say that, it was I can extremely agree with that. irresponsible. I respect that. And nobody, nobody's gonna take. I'm not gonna say nobody. But how many people are you think are gonna take the time to break it down the way we are now? Right. But like they're that, gonna take that, it at face that value. Was, that was the that was the educated take we just heard. We just listened to three minutes of really three him. minutes is a long TV segment time for a <laughs> yeah, take too. Right. Especially just him. Like no one else spoke in this moment. We listened to three minutes of him allude to what you're saying, mm -hmm. but not actually lay it out in terms of oh, this there was a system in place. That they ran, led to hero ball. He was the greatest at it. Like you, he didn't mention any of that. Yeah. He didn't, and and that's why I have an issue with this take, and I have an issue with um, anyone who kind of thinks this way. Even if the let's let's go with this, let's go with the sentiment that that created a bad um, shot, a bad wave in terms of what yeah. basketball the product that was on the floor. Let's let's say let's say that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use use the words to actually describe what so, you mean. So let's say that happened. I still can't blame Michael Jordan for that because once again, you're supposed and this is at least how I see it. Just because I'm the greatest at it doesn't mean that you go around trying to be me. This is the same thing that we we blame Vince Carter, Jerry Stackhouse, um, like you like all the names you mentioned. Vince Carter. We've all looked at and said that's not Jordan. No, you, that's not Jordan. You need to adjust. You're not Jordan. Only person that came along that at least made us even have that inkling of a thought. What's Kobe? And we still say, he ain't Jordan. He, he, ain't just, Jordan. he just became Kobe. Like, like, like after a while, Kobe. yeah. Like, we just had to live with that's Kobe. But for but, years, it was just like that Jordan comparison. But for for all the moments you can say, oh, he changed the game for the worse, or he ruined the game. We the skill level in terms of what we saw that Michael Jordan exhibited mm -hmm. is. Still being addressed today. I was about to absolutely. say, like, imagine his individual skill level and the push that it made for the people that, like, oh, the Stackhouses, the Kobe's, the yeah. Vince Carter, like, we, as an individual level race. Like, we scream, this is the most talented era in terms of they all, they, in terms all of basketball. Started, well, like, like I tell T all the time, basketball currently today is literally like derived on like a tree. Like, yeah. in terms of like, there's certain guys at the top. There's somewhere at the beginning of this tree. There's Bill Russell, there's Will, yeah. there's Julius Serving. Jordan is somewhere underneath Julius Serving, and yeah. then like under Jordan, there's Kobe Bryant. There's like you said, there's Vince Carter. Somewhere underneath Kobe Bryant's tree, there's Kyrie Irving, and then that expands to somewhere under Kyrie Irving's tree, a guy like mm -hmm. Darius Garland. Like basketball, all it, like stems in this type of way, and it's because from a guy like Jordan. And Facts. I get what Stephen they was trying to say, and what you said as well in terms of like individualizing the game. What the way that he was trying to describe it, Stephen A. Smith, you're talking about James Harden and Mac D'Antoni. <laughs> what you're referring, what you're, what you're trying to get at, where like people started to think, okay, I need to be all about myself and shoot all these shots. That's James Harden, like you talked about. I thought like, he was more so alluding to like the three point craze when you talked about them. Though yeah, I thought yeah. you talked about the individualization in terms of Mike D'Antoni 
allowing James Harden to essentially play one on one basketball with four. That's with, that's eight other people. They, they definitely the took it to the extreme. That's one on one. That's basketball. what I was assuming. If, if anything, like I said, like Jordan, like yes, there were times like early in his in, like in Jordan's early career where he, where he didn't have much help. Oh, yeah, Scotty was he, young. Where did he what he had, wanted to do. He had to put up these numbers to do whatever. But then Phil let him know at a certain point in time, dude, like you have to give into this triangle. And yes, was he isoing? Yes, but. Everybody knows, even us as coaches. I'd much rather you if, when you have that talented dude you that know. you want to see get in his bag, you'd much rather it come after a pass. I cut off of a screen. Maybe I just catch it in the post already. And now I get into my elite skill. I screen for somebody else. They screen for me, and then I get to it. Then rather I can bring the ball all the way up down the court and then trying to go into an ISO at the top of the key. Yes, as opposed <laughs> to yeah, what Harden does or what Kyrie did and KD were doing in this finals or excuse me, this first round that wasn't working is. Bring it up against a load of defense, five eyes on me, and I'm trying to get my game off. Facts. That's what's ruining basketball. And so, do we blame that on Michael Jordan? No. no I can't. 